Welcome to the Scribbling app. This is an Obsidian based uh, application uh, and it's used, uh, a primary purpose of it is to uh, be used for writing a novel, a short story, or whatever kind of writing that you may uh, wish to do. And what you're looking at right now, as the note says, this explains how to use this application. It's the scribbling map of content and is basically the home page for everything that is in scribbling. And as you can see, as, you, as I scroll down here, uh, there are topics on the left hand side and links on the right hand side that uh, guide you into what uh, you need to do in order to uh, use the functionality that the topic uh, presents. If we start with the very first topic, uh, start here uh, and go to the link, I'll click on it and uh, there it uh, tells you a little bit about uh, the beginning uh, usage of scribbling, about how you can control the font size. There's a link to the hotkey for how to control uh, the font size. You can decrease the font size with the hotkey control and minus and increase the font size with control plus. So if we hold down the control key and press minus you can see the font is decreasing. If I alternately press the plus it will increase and increase to whatever size you feel comfortable with uh, while using the scribbling app. The first thing I want to introduce you to is the icon bar. It's over here on the left hand side, far left, and there's really only a couple uh, icons here that you will be concerned about. First is open home page. You click here and it brings you back to your home page from wherever you might be within scribbling. This is a very important one to know uh, as you will uh, undoubtedly use this quite a bit. The next one that you might want to use is the open uh, command palette, this one right here. There's also a hotkey for this, it's control P, but if you click on it, then you can just type in a command and it will then execute the command that you type in once you click on it. As an example, let's uh, split the screen vertically. The screen that we'll be splitting is the one that's currently open in the editor. Um, and we'll exp I'll explain that here in a bit. But uh, if you split vertically, click on that, as you can see, two panes open up and are split in a vertical uh, position. I can close one of them by going up here and clicking on the X. You can also uh, do this as splitting horizontally. And to split horizontally, I click on that and as you can see now you have the scribbling map of content uh, horizontally split. I'll close that. The next thing I want to bring your attention to is what I call the binder. Uh, it's also known as the File Explorer in Obsidian. And it's this area right here. It's uh, all of the folders and files that are within Scribbling. Uh, you can click on these arrows that are right pointing and it will open up to show the various contents, subfolders and files within uh, a folder. We also have a menu bar which in this case has three icons. The first being the file explorer or the binder, however you'd like to call it. Then there's a search which we'll talk about a little bit later. And uh, the long form which we'll also talk about a little bit later. There's an area, the main area, uh, which is called the editor. And this is where all of your writing will be done. As you can see along the bottom, there are uh, there is information about characters, number of words, how long it will take uh, normally to read the uh, the page, uh, any backlinks, uh, any links that you may have made to a note, um, and the live preview, which is 
uh, in reading or or live preview mode, source mode. I'll talk about that here in a bit. But uh, those also can be created, for example, here, your new note icon. Here's your new folder icon. And then here's a uh, icon for changing the order of sort of the items that you're looking at in the binder. You really won't be using these uh, in scribbling, although you might find a need for them. The next thing I want to point out is uh, prior to writing any uh, thing like a novel or short story, uh, if you are a plotter, um, someone who is not just a, uh, writing by the seat of their pants, then there is an area here where there's a lot of information provided and tools for plotting uh, the story. Uh, for example, there's a uh, plot guide or grid, excuse me, uh, and there's one for each of the acts, Act 1, 2, and 3. Act 1, uh, you can list here the scenes that are exposition, uh, inciting incident, or the plot point 1. Uh, in Act 2, there's rising action, midpoint, and plot point 2. And as you know, there's a scene list because you can have more than one scene uh, in each act and in each of the uh, areas that are in that act. In plot, or act three rather, there's the pre-climax, the climax, and the denouement, uh, or the resolution. And there are scenes that are involved here. Uh, you can press Control e which is what I just did, and it opens the note in this case, Act 3 Plot Grid in uh, edit mode. And it's here where you would enter the, see, the scenes and then they would show up in the list. So you would just basically type over these and it's a table that would then be presented. The next thing we'll look at are the plot outlines. So in the binder, click on Plot Outlines and there are seven of them. The first being the character-driven plot outline, detective noir plot outline, history, or excuse me, hero's journey plot outline, mystery crime thriller, thriller romance plot, short story plot, and universal plot. Give an example looking at the character-driven plot. You get a PDF, which you can expand and make it uh, easier to read. If you want, you can even move this over or go up here and, and collapse it entirely so that you can get a much better view. Uh, bring it up to all full screen. This is from the Novel Factory and for each of the acts it gives you an outline of what that act should include for a character driven uh, plot outline. Acts 1 through 3. The next thing we'll look at here is a plotting guide. And in there, there is guidance on plotting. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with plotting, uh, it will help you to understand uh, how to plot a story. There's plotting a novel using Save the Cat. That uh, takes you to a link, which then takes you online. Uh, and in the Dabble Craft Your Story, uh, it talks here about plotting the novel using Save the Cat, story beat, the 15 story beats, etc. Then there's story structure fundamentals. Same thing, takes you to Dabble, and you can read about it here the seven basic plot points. And as you can see, there's a, an error here somewhere in the script. So if I close this, we're going to find the error and fix it. You'll need to fix this on your copy. Let's go to open this uh, note up with Control-E 
to get into edit mode and I see the problem there's a, a bracket right here before the HTTPS if you take that bracket out like that then control E to get back to uh, the read mode and click on it and it will take you to the online seven basic plot points uh, in Dabble and you can read about it there then there's the plot of a story and here there's a note which explains in some detail what the plot of a story is as you can see then there's the three act structure you can go online and on Dabble read the three act structure it talks about that in significant detail finally there's the plot outline templates which basically nothing more than uh, just links here which when you hover over them will open up uh, the PDF uh, as opposed to getting them from the binder them itself you can actually get them from the note next thing I'll show you is storyboarding if you're familiar with storyboarding uh, then this will not be uh, anything that uh, you haven't seen before but uh, Act 1, Act 2, and Act 3 each have their own storyboards and in fact they have two kinds of storyboards the first is a Kanban or Kanban however you like to pronounce it and in here you can click on add a card and you can uh, basically put any text that you want in here and which describes the outline of a story or, or the uh, events that take place in a story or scenes in the story however you want to set it up and uh, you can add additional uh, columns here if you like by clicking on more options and then uh, inserting a list be after or before and you can add more lists but uh, that's what the Kanban's are for and uh, the next thing is uh, Excaladraw Excaladraw is a little more complex it is in Excaladraw that you can actually draw a story uh, as if you were to uh, put it on a piece of white paper um, and post it on a wall something of that nature where you're writing the uh, uh, or drafting out plotting out the story in graphics as opposed to words uh, you can enter the Zen mode with an alt Z and get rid of some of this to provide uh, better background um, this is not all the uh, uh, footprint that you have you can move uh, the text around or move graphics around uh, make them smaller larger um, that sort of thing and so that you can create uh, your own uh, storyboard I'll point out here that you have this icon is your library the personal library of all of the uh, fonts and uh, graphics that uh, are available uh, you also have uh, drawings of a, a rectangle a diamond circle arrows that sort of thing um, and text in addition you have an icon here where you can open up uh, a file on your computer and insert it if you so desire to do that if you happen to have something that you've already uh, gotten a file saved on your computer that you want to use in your story uh, you can put it in there okay I've gone out of Zen mode with uh, another alt Z as you can see and I want to demonstrate uh, putting a graphic on the uh, screen here and as you can see it's uh, pretty large so again we can go into Zen mode with an Alt Z and get rid of that you can use um, the uh, from Zen mode let's go back to that for a minute you can use these plus and minuses to 
shrink or expand the size of the graphic. Obviously this is too large. Back into Zen mode for just a second. There's a better way to do that and that's just uh, uh, pressing the con minus and plus, uh, control minus and plus. M control minus will shrink it down, control plus brings it back up. Let's get down here to show that you can move it around. Uh, you can hover over the graphic to get the hand and then the, you can rotate it if you want. Or you can move it around by placing it somewhere in the middle and then moving it this way. Then by clicking off the graphic, uh, it will remove that box that's around it. Again, you see the box. Now you don't see it if you click outside. And again, we can move them around. Click outside like this. Bring up another graphic if we want to do that. Whatever you happen to want to do. Like this. And you can join them by using the arrow. So there's a lot you can do here, and it's just all up to your imagination. There is some guidance on how to use this Excaladraw. You go back to the open home page for just a moment and scroll down here to storyboarding guide. You click on this note, and it will give you a little information about how to use the Kanban and where to go to learn more about the storyboard uh, in Excaladraw format. Now I'm back on uh, the scribbling map of content and I want to go to show you the manuscript. Uh, the manuscript folder, you click down uh, and uh, it will reveal here the uh, front matter. Let's click on that. Here's where you're going to find the title page. Uh, a note for the epigraph if you have one, a preface if you have one, and the prologue. The title page, for example, is just simply where you can enter the title of the book and the author's name. Then you also have back matter, which you may have an afterword, an epilogue, or a postscript. Inside the manuscript are your acts, acts 1, acts 2, and acts 3. And right now they're simply folders. As you can see, there's nothing underneath. There will be something underneath here shortly, as I'll explain. If you don't like acts, or if you're not interested in using the three-act structure, you can delete these simply just by uh, right-clicking and saying delete, for example. Um, and replace them with whatever you like. It could be you may want to replace these with just nothing but chapters. But I will be showing you how to uh, create chapters within each act and how to uh, create your characters, your scenes, and settings. That's the next thing that we'll do. One thing I forgot to mention that I will mention now before we get into creating chapters is the novel outline. You can create an outline for your novel. Uh, what you're looking at here is this, a sample outline, which is simply um, the outline of uh, what I was going to discuss in this video. Um, there is some uh, important functionality here that's going to assist you greatly in creating an outline. For example, in here where I have intro to the home screen, I can click on this numeral one, and as you can see up here, there is a, uh, presented a sample outline and intro to the home screen. Uh, those are uh, basically links that take you back to where you were. Um, and again, I can go here, and this is intro to the home screen, which is what we're looking at. Uh, as you get deeper into this, it will then expand this, uh, these links, and it forms a hierarchy of links uh, to 
your outline itself. So that's uh, important to have if you uh, need to move around in your outline. Another very important thing is as you're typing your outline, um, as you notice, I click on this particular one. It's highlighted. The rest are grayed out. And that is the case with uh, all of the text, by the way. Uh, the What you're working on at the moment will be highlighted. Uh, the rest will be sort of grayed to where they it won't show up as well. And uh, that helps you to focus on what you're writing at the moment. But if you go to the end of the line and press the Enter key, as you can see, it opens up and renumbers the uh, elements in your outline for you automatically. We can go back with a backspace. Uh, if you needed to move around, um, say you wanted to move this show the icon bar down at the bottom, uh, it's very easy to do. And that's done with uh, Control Shift and the up or down arrows. So as you can see, this is very handy uh, for creating your outline <coughs> and uh, I highly recommend it if you're outlining, uh, you want to, to use this uh, because it will save you a lot of time. Creating chapters uh, is very simple. Uh, it's all done manually, but basically if you want to create a chapter in Act 1, all you need to do is just right click hover over and right click and just say new folder and then it'll be opened here to where you can add in the chapter and now you've added uh, chapter 1 to act 1 in the scribbling map of content you will notice that there is a chapter guide for creating and naming chapters if you go there, it does give you information uh, about how to uh, create the chapter and how to mark the chapter as a long-form project. Um, that's a little detailed uh, and you need to read about that. Um, but what the long-form project does is it uh, controls the um, insertion of drafts uh, you may have multiple drafts of a chapter, for example, and by creating a long form project, you can automatically create drafts and uh, track those drafts. And I'll show you a little bit about that uh, later on. But there are some notes in here. Um, you do not want to delete a chapter while it is in the long form project. You have to unmark it before you can delete it. Uh, not doing that can uh, mess up with the uh, data in the index, so you got to remember to do that. There is a, uh, a link here uh, where you can read about the plugin itself if you want to know more about it, and also a YouTube video you can watch that demonstrates uh, the use of the long form uh, project. So now that we have a chapter, we want to mark it as a long form project. To do that, you simply hover over the chapter, right click, and select mark as a long form project. This uh, add a long form project dialog box will come up. Uh, the index for this uh, chapter will be under index, and the drafts will be in a drafts folder underneath the chapter. And that's where you'll have draft one, draft two, draft three, however many drafts. So you want to click on add a long form or add to long form. And now it's automatically created for you a drafts folder and underneath that a draft one folder, which is empty, and an index. Uh, word of caution here, you do not want to mess with this index. Leave it alone. Don't touch it. If you uh, edit, edit this uh, manually, you can uh, totally screw up uh, this uh, structure here and it won't work properly. 
Another side note here is that you don't need to use chapter followed by a number. You can use whatever you want. You can, you can use a uh, text for the chapter name. However, as explained in the uh, creating and naming chapters, you'll want to uh, have a numeral uh, at the beginning, uh, even though if you're using text, uh, because you want to use, uh, want to keep rather, um, the chrono chronology uh, of it. Um, if you don't do that, then it's going to sort by uh, the alphabet, and that may not be how the chapters would appear in the Acts. Now I'm going to demonstrate how to create a character. Um, and that is basically from the character index here. We'll click on that in a minute. But there's a note on how to create and view your characters. This is something you'll want to read through. Let's go back here. And uh, down here also is a character guide and it explains all about characters. Click on that for just a moment. And here you'll find the character types, protagonist, antagonist, a static character, uh, something about character traits, links to the internet for various things such as examples of traits, 14 common character archetypes, uh, how to create characters uh, that your readers will simp for, it talks about the character arc, and then some pre-writing in information. So now if we go to um, back to the home page to the character index, just click on that. You're presented with a uh, what's called a data view and there's nothing in there at the moment and a button here for new character. So we'll click on new character and here's where we'll add the character. So typing in, let's add the character Miss Darcy, Mrs. Darcy, and click on the OK button. Now it wants to know uh, what the type is. Uh, so we'll type in protagonist and click the OK. Then uh, we want to know what type of, type of archetype uh, Mrs. Darcy is. Uh, and we'll just use hero for uh, lack of anything better at the moment. Hero as the archetype and click OK. And what is presented is a note that's created. Uh, that note will then give you uh, the metadata and the character traits. You can fill this information in. And this will create one note for every character that is in your story. It is in your story notes, as you can see over here, story notes. If we click this down and then uh, unfold the characters, we have a character list now that contains Miss Darcy. And uh, if we go to look at uh, the uh, guide itself, not the guide, but the index, then you can see now Miss Darcy, protagonist, archetype hero, is in the uh, data view. And there's also a link to that character so that if you're looking at your character index, at your various characters and want to go to one of them, you can just simply click on it like this. Uh, the next thing we would want to do, perhaps, is to create a setting uh, that the character is in. And um, here we have the World Building Index is where that is done. And there's a note also for how to create and view your settings. So you would want to read that. We'll go back, go to the World Building Index. Similar to how you create your characters, there's a button for new setting. And there's a data view that shows you the setting, the time frame, and then a link to the setting. So let's click on new setting. Here we're going to add a setting uh, as England, and then we'll click OK. And now it's asking you, when is this setting? We'll say mid-1800s, and then we'll click the OK button. Then it presents a note which is labeled or titled England with meta metadata and uh, the setting description and narrative. Here's where you would write a little bit about the setting to describe what it is. If you go back to your open home page 
and to the World Building Index, you'll see that it's created a line, England, mid-1800s, and then a link to that uh, note that was created that describes your setting in detail. Now I want to demonstrate uh, creating a scene. If you go to uh, your content, map of content, you'll see this scene index similar to uh, your setting and characters. And then a note here on how to create and view your scenes. Uh, you'll want to read this. Um, very important information concerning uh, scenes. It tells you how to do what I'm about to show you. So let's go back and create a scene. Click on this and we see a new scene. And an add scene dialog box appears. And uh, for purposes of demonstration, I'm going to say the scene is Ms. Darcy is surprised. We'll click the OK button. And now we're going to list the characters that would be in that scene. You can list uh, one character or multiple characters, but just separate the characters with commas. For the purposes of this demonstration, I'll have two characters, Mrs. Darcy and Mr. Bennett. We'll click on that. And here is the scene for Mrs. Darcy is surprised. Uh, it's blank at the moment, and this is where you will do your writing. You would want to go into edit mode, which is control E. And don't you don't want to type over your metadata. Go down below your metadata and then start your text. So here's where you would you would do your writing. You can either write your scene now, as I started to show just here, but uh, what I'm going to tell you is you probably will want to move your scene up to the chapter that the scene appears in, and not only that, the draft in which the chapter uh, has been written, uh, the scene has been written for that chapter. And uh, if you just scroll down in the binder, down here um, in your story notes, you'll see there's scenes you uh, unfold that and the one that you are working on now, Mrs. Darcy is surprised, is here. It is this scene under new scenes uh, that you will want to move into the draft folder. Uh, a way to do this is to open the command palette. Uh, the command palette is control and the letter P. And there you see the command palette. But uh, this is not the way which, in which we will do this. Is there is a better way, which I will now demonstrate. What you want to do is go down to the New Scenes folder to where Miss Darcy is surprised and highlight it by placing the, the or hovering over it and press Alt-M for Move. And that is the hotkey that then opens the command palette. You will tap uh, type in uh, draft one and that should bring up the folder that you want to move that scene to and you can see by just typing in the word draft alone uh, what you want to do is click on this right here which is the draft one of chapter one so we click on that and now we see that the uh, under the new scenes is now empty because that scene has been moved up here under draft one. So now we have Miss Darcy is surprised here. Now you can click into the note in edit mode and continue writing that note. Or uh, in this case, it's a scene in chapter one. Uh, this process is uh, repeated for each scene in chapter one of act one. Now let's say that you have completed draft one, you've done other drafts, or not other drafts, but other uh, scenes in draft one, and uh, you want to um, do another draft of Miss Darcy is Surprised um, to further refine that, that scene. So what you can do is simply go up here to the long form button, which is this button on the right, click on it, and you'll see here in the chapter one, 
this is all we've got is one chapter so far and only one draft within that chapter um, if you had more you could then change these In, on the scenes tab you see Miss Darcy is surprised in the drafts tab you can see it's just one draft so let's go back to scenes Miss Darcy is surprised uh, if you wanted to look at it uh, then you can go here just click on this and it will take you there and then you could go into edit mode let's go back here to um, read mode for a minute and now we want to create another draft of this particular uh, scene you can go here and, and uh, click into new draft uh, type in draft 2 and a dialog box shows is either an empty draft or a copy of draft one. And typically you would use copy of draft one because you want to refine the draft that you have already written. And as it says here, draft two will start as a copy of draft one. We go back, click in here, and hit the enter key. And now we have two drafts. Two drafts of this particular scene, Miss Darcy is surprised. We can go back to uh, look at the binder again. And now you can see there's another draft folder, draft two. And under it is another is a copy of Miss Darcy is Surprised. And then from here, you can enter the edit mode and then do more writing. And now you have Miss Darcy is Surprised draft one and Miss Darcy is surprised draft two. The next thing I want to talk about is timeline. You can timeline a novel, the events that occur in a novel, so that you have a chronology uh, graphic that shows the, each of the events that occur and when they occur. Um, there is a hotkey for creating the timeline. So let's go to hotkeys down here, click on this, and uh, you will see this, this add an event is Alt-E. You'll also see here that you can add a character with Alt-C, a scene with Alt-N, and a setting with Alt-T. Uh, this would be as an alternate to uh, clicking on the particular indices here as I was showing you earlier. So if we go back to hotkeys, um, let me now demonstrate how you can add events uh, to the timeline. Uh, I will not be adding them for any particular novel. I will just be demonstrating events um, that I will create uh, uh, on the fly here. So I'm going to press Alt-E and it asks for the date. Now we'll use August the 9th, 2022. We'll click OK. Now it's asking for the title of the event. And here is the title. So we will click OK. And then the content of that event. And just a, a text. It can be longer than this. But this is all I'm going to put in here. Click the OK button. And now to see that uh, event, I can go to Timeline, and now there's a new event which is added uh, to uh, the, ch the folder Timeline. I click on that, and you can see the date, August 9th, 2022, my dog's birthday, and this is the day we celebrate Dixie's birthday. And we'll be wanting to add this new event to the Story Timeline. As the uh, text in the scribbling map of content under uh, t events timelines explains, you do this by right clicking on the new event file and merging the entire file with is what you select. Then you select the timeline, story timeline, and it will be added. So now I will go to New Timeline, right-click, Merge Entire File With, 
and we'll want to put in here story timeline which is this one right here and now you the story timeline contains this event and the new time uh, event rather has disappeared because it's now merged with the story timeline I will now add another event to this timeline to demonstrate what it'll look like when you have multiple events something to keep in mind and the note uh, the guide that I gave with this does explain that you do not want to have this story timeline open on this in the editor when you merge a file to it because that will corrupt the story timeline so uh, let's do that now so again to create another event we'll use the hotkey alt E asking for a date and here the date is September 12th, 2022. Click OK. And now the title happens to be My Birthday, so I'm going to click OK. And now for the content. Simply, this is the day my birthday is celebrated. We'll click OK. And a new note is created. We click on that new note, and there it is. Now we will want to merge it with Story Timeline again by right clicking, Merge Entire File with, and we will want the Timeline Story Timeline, which is this up here. Click that, and as you can see, it pops in and it's in chronological order because that's the way I entered it. If you find that uh, an event is not in chronological order and that's how you want your events to appear, which makes sense, uh, then the uh, note that I provided does give you guidance on how to move those around. Now something that I have not mentioned uh, to this point is refractored text. Uh, and you can see that refractored text is in the binder here. And uh, currently there's nothing there. So what's up with this? And what is refractored text? Well, let's say that there is uh, something, a paragraph, a uh, couple lines, whatever, that you've written and you want to use that again um, or move it around. And the way to do that is uh, there's a way which is uh, very, very nice. It, a new note is created uh, for the, the text that you refractor. Um, to do this, and it's explained, it is explained in the uh, method or map of content, is that you uh, first enter editing mode. I'm in editing mode. And say it's this chapter here, excuse me, it's this paragraph here that you want to refactor. So what you would do is highlight that paragraph as such. Press uh, Control Shift and C to clip it, and now you're going to type the name that you're going to use for the refractored note. I'm just going to call it my refractored note, and as you can see there, it says Enter to Create. So we press the Enter key, and what it does is it creates another note called my refractored note. It's the uh, paragraph that you clipped out and it resides under the refractored text folder so there it is so at any time you want to go back to it you could be here and go back to that note it's there now the very last thing I want to show is compiling your manuscript once it's completed uh, and that's done here from the long form button. Click on that. And the compile, as you know, we saw scenes and drafts, but there's a compile. There's five steps that are involved. It strips the front matter, removes any links that you have, prepends a title, concatenates text, and saves a note. And what it does, it will take your manuscript and Take all of the uh, scenes that you've written and compile them into one note. There's documentation here to read.
about this. You can add steps to this process, but it's completed by clicking the compile button. So I want to thank you for watching this. Um, it's I know it's a rather long, uh, about 50 minute long uh, movie here or video. So uh, if you have any questions, uh, just reach out to me. And uh, thank you and have a nice day.